Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at some of the changes that home users will see when they upgrade to Synology's new operating system, DSM-7. So DSM-7 was released today. If you want to upgrade, I have a video that I suggest you watch. I will leave a pop-up for that now, where I basically do my best to kind of lay out some of the steps you can take to try and have a successful upgrade. And in case you do run to any issues, a fallback plan that you can always restore from. But today we're going to look at some of the changes that you might notice as soon as you launch that new DSM-7. So I'm going to focus on the home user changes uh, because there are some changes that enterprises might be able to implement, but I'm not sure that many home users will look at those. I'll talk a little bit about those later, but we're going to focus right now on some of those changes that might impact the greater audience that Synology has. So the first thing you're going to notice as soon as you log in is obviously that the UI has changed. So there's basically been an entire redesign. You have a new background, you have new icons. Inside of the control panel, a few of the things have been renamed. So you basically have to be aware of that. Everything for the most part is where it used to be. The applications all function the way that they used to function, but they have a new skin. And unfortunately, for probably a short period of time, you might not know exactly where some things are, but that's generally the case with new updates to existing operating systems. So one thing I'm actually very excited about is Synology's new login portal. Now, this technically existed in DSM-6. It was under the name of Application Portal. But the thing that I really like about this is that for any of the packages that you install, that have web interfaces, Synology has automatically created a new landing page for them. So in DSM-6, you were always able to go in and change the landing page, but it was up to you. You had to go through, you had to create a background, you had to customize it the way that you wanted to customize it. If you didn't do that, all of the login pages look the exact same. So if you were using Synology's drive server, for example, and you sent a link to one of your users, they would be brought to the default DSM login page. And the reason that's confusing is because for certain users, they might be used to logging into DSM, Synology Drive, File Station, et cetera. And at that point, you have to look at the URL. So if you were one of the people that went through and customized those login pages, then this isn't really a big change for you. But for the people who didn't, Anytime you send a link to a user or you try and log into any of these applications login pages, you're going to basically be prompted right away. You're going to know exactly what you're logging into. It's a small change that I think will have a greater impact. Obviously, it's not huge because you could have just looked at the URL, but it's big enough where it looks a little bit more professional and you feel like you're logging into a separate application as opposed to DSM. Now you have the same functionality that you always had. You can go through and customize the ports if you'd like and basically make any of these changes. But the big change would be that these login pages are customized by default. You don't have to actually do anything. The next thing is a massive change to Synology's photo application. So this is probably something that the majority of people know. But Synology is releasing a new application. It's called Synology Photos, and basically it replaces Photo Station and Synology Moments. So I've gone out of my way to not create a tutorial on this yet, and it's because I think that it's going to change, uh, at least from the beta when it was initially rolled out. So if you're interested in seeing a future tutorial on that, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, but I'm going to try and get that out when the application is fully released and I have fully tested it, um, especially when I'm using it for my own personal photos. So this is a massive change because it basically takes Photo Station and Moments and it tries to merge them into one application. Now with DSM-6, obviously you were able to install either Photo Station or Moments, and I'm sure there are people that use both. You will no longer have those options. The idea, as long as Synology delivers on uh, their expectation is to create a the perfect photo application for home users. Now, obviously, we're not going to know that until it's out for a little while and it can be compared to other uh, applications, but that's their goal. And I actually hope that they do deliver on that because it'd be great to be able to manage everything inside of this, especially with Google Photos kind of changing everything as far as their pricing structure goes. So that's an application change. And one more application change is that Active Backup for Business, if you're currently using that, it allows you to go through and backup Linux machines now. 
So you were always able to back up Windows servers and Windows PCs, and you can still do that. But if you go to the physical server section, you're now gonna see a new tab for Linux. And you can add a device at that point, and it's gonna tell you exactly where you can download the installer. So when you install that, I'm gonna try and create a tutorial on this in the future as well. Uh, but when you install that, it will allow you to back up that Linux machine the same way that you were able to back up Windows machines in the past. Now, I'm not sure how many home users outside of myself use Linux, uh, but it is something that, you know, is an addition. So nothing wrong with that. Glad to see they continue to expand this application. So one of the final changes is Synology's Active Insights. And this actually looks really awesome. So basically, they are trying to link all of your NAS devices to your Synology account. And at that point, you can log in with your Synology account and you're gonna be able to manage all of them and view the storage health, et cetera, from a single dashboard. So for home users, there might not be many people that have multiple NAS devices. But fortunately, you don't have to have multiple NAS devices to use this. So you're still gonna be able to go through and keep track of your system. You can view any of the storage health. You can receive email and push notifications, basically alerts in case anything on your NAS is looking unusual. Um, the idea is that you should just be able to log into one centralized dashboard, view everything that you need to for your NAS device, and you'll be able to ensure that everything is functioning properly. So as far as the changes for home users go, that's really what I think will impact the majority of users. There are other changes, and in my opinion, those changes will impact enterprises more than they will impact home users. So that's not to say that home users will not get any uh, use out of them, but in my opinion, this is something more geared for enterprises. And one of those tools is called Synology's Hybrid Cloud Share. So I'm not gonna get too deep into this because I have not personally tested it out yet, but the idea is that you're able to mount a share that is hosted in Synology C2 Cloud. So basically you mount a share the same way you would go through and create a shared folder. And at that point, that share is hosted in the cloud. So anytime you try and write to it, it will automatically take that information and it will upload it to the cloud. Up until this point, it has been in beta, um, but at this point it is gonna be fully rolled out. So this is something that I think enterprises will get a lot more use out of than home users, but it is something that a few home users might see some value in. So feel free to check that out. But as far as the DSM-7 update goes, that is really what I consider to be some of the bigger changes that home users might find. If you are watching this video and you have not updated your NAS to DSM-7 yet, like I said earlier, please watch the video I released last week. I'm hoping that that will help you out um, as far as putting together some type of plan to upgrade to DSM-7. Um, but if you've gone through all these changes and you haven't really seen anything that you've liked, you don't necessarily have to update. So it wouldn't hurt to wait it out and see what some of the future updates bring in case there are any bugs. But these are some of the new features that you might get some usage out of. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.